Today on CityCast Chicago, the Democratic National Convention is coming to town next summer. Walmart is abruptly closing four locations this weekend, and the Bulls' playoff hopes are headed to South Beach tonight. All that and more with the co-founders of The Tribe, publisher Morgan Elise Johnson, and editor-in-chief Tiffany Walden. It's Friday, April 14th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is What Chicago's Talking About. Good morning, Morgan, Tiffany. Welcome back to CityCast Chicago. Thank you for having us. Hello, hello. Always good to be here. Hey, I'm blessed to be able to see y'all multiple times this week. We're going to start with good news today, and that's how good it feels outside. I didn't went for multiple long walks. I dropped my bike off to get tuned so I can get back out on that thing. You know, I'm loving where we are middle of April. We didn't got up to 77 degrees. It feel like it's 80 outside right now. Tiffany, I'm going to start with you. How are you celebrating uh, seeing the sun finally? I'm thankful for the sun. <laughs> it's giving me a new level of hope um, that we're getting closer to summer, that we're getting closer to some fun, um, that we can just balance things out. Because for the last uh, three, four months, it's just been news and election and news and election and news and election. So I'm ready to be outside. Mm -hmm. Cloudy and gray skies. Morgan, what are you looking forward to doing now that when you step outside, right, you don't feel like you got to be layered up, layered up? I'm looking forward to um, actually driving around, you know, driving around Lakeshore Drive, DuSable Lakeshore Drive. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. um, I got a new car with this like sunroof and I can't wait to Come just on. like open up the sunroof and, you know, actually hang outside <laughs> of the car. I like <laughs> nobody's that. watching. You know, I'm excited about that. Just being free. Come on. Windows down, cruising down Lakeshore Drive. Every time I'm. Because I, I was walking up Lakeshore Drive. I don't live too far from like 51st. So I was able to cross over. And every time I'm walking up there, I just like take a moment and look out. And I just can never get past the fact that you just can't see anything. You just look out onto Lake Michigan and there's nothing on the other side. And I just never take for granted how even though I'm I'm terrified of how big that body of water is. And I try to stay close to the shore most of the times. I just I always allow myself to just be amazed at the fact that we really are this dope city uh, right here on the lake. We all looking forward to summer 2023 here in Chicago. But this week, we got some big news about summer 2024. And I'm talking about the Democratic National Convention has finally announced after two years of hype that they're going to be coming to Chicago in August uh, for the 12th time the last time the dnc was here was 1996 and they was nominating uh william bill clinton uh to be president of the united states and now we're here and joe biden looks like he's gonna be gearing up for running again uh morgan when you first heard the news that the dnc picked chicago what were your thoughts i i mean i thought that like wow this is a win for for pritzker and and brandon johnson you know that was a, an immediate thought and then I started to do some reading and I saw that that Pritzker opened up his pocketbook and that was a part of the reason why they chose yeah. Chicago. Looked like they reached out to some to some sports team owners, reached out to some other hundred millionaires and billionaires and said, you know, we'll we help pay for this thing. Yeah. And then I, I started to think about the history of the DNC in Chicago and that there's mm -hmm. been, you know, massive protests around the DNC. So I'm interested to see how... Um, the political climate is going to be shifted by this moment. Um, I'm interested to see what the messaging is going to be and if this is going to be a time where the Democratic Party is going to embrace newer progressive approaches um, to their messaging, especially around crime, because Joe Biden was just saying that democratic cities need to be uh, embracing more law and order. Like he was just saying that and Chicago mm -hmm. really rejected that ideology. So I, you know, I'm a little weary about the democratic establishment being here and I'm wondering if they're going to uplift um, what just happened with the progressive movement here, or if they're going to try to squash that. So I, you know, I'm going to be peeping game and seeing what, what mm -hmm. types of narratives are going to come out of this? 
When you talk about squash, when you talk about history of protest, we have to make that parallel to 55 years ago, right? August of 1968. At that point, Martin Luther King had been assassinated. Robert Kennedy had been assassinated. The nation is protesting the Vietnam War. And 10,000 demonstrators are here in Chicago, in many cases, organizing peacefully from Grant Park to Lincoln Park. And Daly at the time basically gives cops all authority to to squash any and all protests. And so you see tear gas, right? You see people being beat with batons and rifles. So Tiffany, seeing the DNC come here and choose to come here after the win of Brandon Johnson, someone who you all write is asking Chicago to reimagine public safety, asking Chicago to embrace progressive politics, what do you think the messaging next year at the, the 2024 DNC is going to be uh, coming from, from all parties? Governor Pritzker, Tammy Duckworth, Joe Biden, Brandon Johnson. You know, I can't predict what the DNC folks are messaging is going to be, um, because as Morgan mentioned, you know, Biden is already talking about we need to be tough on crime in, in democratic cities. But what I can speak to is that, you know, the movement doesn't stop. So by the time the DNC gets here, uh, folks will be organizing around things. You know, mm -hmm. we still have uh, people being displaced out south uh, with the Obama Center. We still have people that are fighting for uh, treatment, not trauma, and bring Chicago home. I know uh, Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson uh, said that he was going to tackle those things in his first 100 days. Uh, but if they're not tackled, they will be organizing around that around mm -hmm. the time of the DNC. So. Um, you know, it's not going to be a quiet time. And I'm just one, I'm just interested in seeing how um, Mayor elect Johnson handles this. And if he continues to champion the organizers that put him in office or if he, you know, kind of bends to what the Democratic Democratic establishment uh, wants. The national attention will once again turn to Chicago. Are there benefits here? We're thinking 50,000 people coming here, which we're not, you know, that, that that's nothing new to us. We already got hundreds of thousands of people coming to summertime shower. We already talking about how packed it's going to be this year. But do you see benefits of that, right? Like we say, like the goal of the tribe is about reshaping the narrative, If is having those national cameras here in Chicago, that attention here and our ability to challenge, our ability to organize, our ability to to flex and show off also the beauty of our city. Do, do y'all see the benefit in, in that moment and opportunity next summer? Mm, that's, that's hard to answer as well, because um, typically, you know, we had like the NBA all-star weekend that came here. Um, you know, we have other big events that come here. Complex, complex con came here. Mm -hmm. um, Lollapalooza comes here every year. Um, and these people, we don't see an investment in communities when they show up. You know, we see downtown change. We see the neighboring surrounding areas of downtown change because, you know, the hotel industry is there. People will be going to restaurants and spending money there. But will they be going to North Lawndale to spend money at yeah. Soleil? Because it's going to be on the, the, you know, the near west side over at the UC again. Right. And uh, five minutes west of the United Center, people are living in poverty. Um, so, you know, will we actually see some long lasting investment or some meaningful investment uh, in the on the west side when people come here? You know, we don't really know that. Um, but I hope that with, with us having a mayor who... Um, is interested in, you know, investing in people that he is able to um, generate some of that investment into the South and West sides while these people are here and the national attention is on Chicago. And I also have to say, just to your point of there being a narrative or us being able to be on the world stage once again, it really all depends on how the media um, platforms and frames these narratives because once again we Thanks. have to trust a national international tv cameras to responsibly cover and frame messaging which time and time again um, we just have not seen that done so mm -hmm. um if there are protests if there are if there is tension if there is clashing um the media tends to focus on the clashes they don't tend to uplift the demands of the people. So I, I, I just hope that 
that local news really sets the tone and that we are responsible in uplifting the voices of, of local Chicagoans. Move into some stories that might not have gotten the same attention this week. We talk about someone uh, coming to Chicago, but also this week, the mega conglomerate known as Walmart announced that they are closing almost immediately four stores across Chicago. Uh, Tiffany, I want to start here with you. We are seeing a super center closed in Chatham. We're seeing neighborhood markets uh, closed in Bronzeville and Little Village and up in Lakeview. Uh, when you first saw this news, uh, what was your response? I just thought about the people in the communities uh, that are, are going to be harmed by this sudden closing. You have people who rely on uh, Walmart for their health care. Um, they have clinics in there. You have people who rely on Walmart to get their prescriptions filled for their um, ailments. Um, you also have people, of course, that rely on Walmart for groceries and for uh, fresh food. So, um you know, something like that happened um, in the Wicker Park area where uh, CVS closed and Wal and Walgreens closed. And so there's really only one Walgreens in um, the immediate area that everybody is now coming to and everybody has transferred their prescriptions to. And it's jam packed to get your medicine out of that Wal that Walgreens on um, on Milwaukee and Wood. I'm thinking about, you know, on the south and west sides where, you know, there may not even be an alternative nearby for people to go and get their prescriptions. So they have to drive or, or take the bus even further to get um, the medicine and the care that they need. So it's institutional harm. You know, Walmart said they they died to come to Chicago, right? They, they really wanted to be here. And for them to just close so suddenly saying that they're not making a profit, whereas I was reading Block Club Chicago, um, they have a story where people were saying that the, the Chatham location is packed. So, like people are in there all the time. Yeah. And at this exact same time, you see Inglewood residents protesting, you know, once the Whole Foods abruptly shutter and it looked like a save a lot was going to be sort of hastily moved in. You've seen Aldi's uh, shutter uh, across the city. Uh, the harm that takes place to community. Right. We say this all the time. When we talk about public safety. No one includes this. No one includes grocery stores and pharmacies and clinics just abruptly closing with like days notice, right? To see a, a, a company as big as Walmart. And again, they come out and they say the Chicago portfolio stores are unprofitable. But to tell entire communities you have until Sunday to figure out where you're going to get your groceries moving forward, where you're going to get your home appliances moving forward, where you're going to get your medicine moving forward. That type of institutional harm is just never accounted for when we talk about keeping communities safe. Morgan, I want to turn to another story, right? The Tribe published a piece that said it's time to reimagine the conversation on public safety. And a poll has recently come out, which was conducted by Greenberg, Quillen, Rosner Research. Um, and it says that about 55 percent of Chicago, again, a majority of Chicago want to invest in crime prevention. Right. Want to look at the root causes of crime, want to invest in communities and people. Right. We have this data. We have the mayor here, you know. Is Chicago ready at large? Is our structure built for us to have these more nuanced conversations around public safety? Well, first of all, let me say that this poll really blew me because haven't we been saying this this whole time? And then mm -hmm. they put out this poll after the election. Like, oh, by the way, the community is interested in having this conversation. Like, this is important to them. We just went through an entire election season where they asked them the same questions about public safety over and over again. Are you going to defund the police or increase the police? So for this poll to come out like after the fact, it was frustrating for me because we I just feel like we could have had a much more productive conversation over the past couple of months about public safety. I'm happy. I'm glad. I'm I'm relieved a little bit that that we have some movement here, that Chicago is ready for a more nuanced conversation on public safety that includes investing in people, that includes examining the root causes of crime, which, of course, is poverty 
And I hope that, you know, as our societal priorities change and the framework that we look at this problem changes, that we can experiment with some with some solutions um, rather than just making people disappear, which is what arresting people does. It's just saying, get this problem out of my face. I want this person removed. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't really solve the problem. It doesn't get to the root of the problem. Participants were less likely to choose higher and more police as a crime fighting strategy. I think only 18 percent of those surveyed selected that as an option. Um, and so, like you said, we, we have to have a more nuanced conversation here. And the hope is that the incoming administration, the incoming city council um, uh, is ready to do that. Every episode of City Cash Chicago pretty much ends the same way. And that's me either annoyingly or uh, enthusiastically, depending on your perspective, uh, singing to the listener. And that's with some good news to get the people through the rest of the episode, the rest of their day, the forthcoming weekend. Uh, and so we got to lead the people with some good news. Tiffany, I want to start with you. The Bulls are not dead yet. We watched them earlier this week take on the Toronto Raptors in Toronto, uh, and we made it out. Uh, and tonight, we headed to South Beach. Uh, how tense was it watching that game? At one point, we was down 19 points, my G. It was, it was bleak. It was <laughs> so bleak. By the, time, by the time halftime showed up, it was bleak. But yeah, in the third quarter, they started to come back. And it's exciting. For me, it's been really exciting to watch Kobe White this season. Like, he has really... His game has really transformed. They've been talking about how he's been in the gym, working on his handles and stuff. And that all of that is like really showing this season. So anytime he comes out, I'm like really excited. And he was a part of that um uh busting that deficit that they was in in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. So um looking forward to Miami and seeing if we're gonna get a Jimmy Buckets revenge type game or yeah. if pull it out. But most importantly, I want DeMar DeRozan's daughter to be there because he's talking about he talking about he, he said she got to go back to school. Like, oh, no, what? Like she's now she's now a part of the team. Like she <laughs> there. get her get her a tutor. <laughs> Man, during the game, the Toronto Raptors typically shoot about 78, 80% on free throws. Yesterday they shot 50%. And if you were watching the game, you could hear it anytime a Raptor went up to shoot a free throw. There was just this all oh, this scream that just took over the arena. Foul going to go against DeRozan. A chance to put it up to a 20-point advantage for Toronto. Misses the first. And players were just bricking clutch free throws over and over and over. I just got to I just gotta say that, you know, DeMar uh, DeRozan's daughter, she was definitely giving us a spiritual message that I received. She was saying that we can go into enemy territory. We can stand alone. <laughs> We can be loud and proud and unapologetic. We can be colorful with all of our sparkles on. We Come can on. take a victory out of the out of the hands of the opponent. She did. She really Come did. On. Yeah. Morgan, we also got to talk good news about the tribe. Earlier this year, y'all celebrated six years in the game earlier this week. Y'all had this wonderful upfront event where y'all brought individuals in just to learn a little bit more. You know, just what does it feel like now, six years in, still feeling like you're you're redefining, still feeling like you're growing, still feeling like you're you're realizing the the potential uh, of what y'all have built together? It's six years, but I'm telling you, it really feels like it's the beginning. I find myself all the time saying that the tribe is a startup and then people are like, how long have y'all been around? And I'm like, six years. They're like, girl, that's not a startup. But now as we are starting to get some capacity, people are really starting to see what we can do. So we're taking our audience with us on this ride as we try to figure out the city of Chicago and why black people ain't got nothing. That's really, mm. that's really why we're here. We really want to understand these systems, um, deconstruct them interrogate them and build a better Chicago through the narrative and hopefully be an example. So yeah, it really, it really does feel like with this election, like we've turned a new leaf and like we're on a, a we're setting off on a new journey. Mm. That's so beautiful to hear. And I'm so grateful, not only for the time y'all make to come on City Cash Chicago, uh, but I've been following y'all work since before this podcast. So I'm grateful for all of the work that y'all do and, you know, like I always tell y'all, email when I see y'all in person, whatever y'all need from me, I got y'all. Um, let me wrap this up with some good news of my own. 
Uh, and it's just a shout out to my homies. April is my birthday month, but it's also the birthday month of a couple of my best friends uh, from one of my brothers, John, uh, to Darius, to Natalie, to Chris. Uh, these are just some of the people who I've known since elementary school, high school, college, uh, who I consider some of my closest friends uh, and the people uh, who I go to when I need a shoulder, the people I go to when I want to kick it in Chicago, the people who are constantly telling me every day what the podcast sounds like and if the last episode was good or mid uh, and so I want to shout out to the people in my tribe who keep it real with me uh, and who continue to uplift me. Uh, I love all of y'all. I hope the birthday celebrations over the next couple of weeks, uh, you know, are, are fantastic. I'm excited to see all of y'all. And thank y'all for listening. Uh, two co-founders of the tribe morgan elise johnson and tiffany walden i appreciate y'all always making time for city cash chicago hopefully y'all have a fantastic weekend thank you you too and happy birthday to you it's a lot of april birthdays out here so mm-hmm. it's coming up in a couple weeks but i'm, I'm, I'm excited about two weeks away I'm, I'm so that makes you a tourist then you're not an aries right yes i'm a tourist okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. It's always fun to come on the show. And, and you know, I always got to tell you that you are one of the best to ever do it. Love being interviewed by you. Thank you so much. Before I let you go, I want to give a huge shout out to the people behind CityCast Chicago from lead producer Kerry Shepard, producer Simone Alisea, our newsletter editor this week sitting in for Sydney Madden, Natalia Aldana. I want to give a special shout out to our marketing coordinator, Jermaine Thomas, who is doing all this great new work you're seeing on our social media platforms. I got to thank the people behind the music from Sam Thousand, Mark Greenberg of the Mayfair Workshop and all the kimonos. And of course, I got to thank y'all. The people who listen to CityCast Chicago, the people who read Hey Chicago, our daily newsletter. We will be back here bright and early Monday. Join us then. Peace. All right, check my battery. All right, we good. Here we go. And a one, and a three, and a 1968.